Hello everyone, my name is uh, Samuel Ponce and today I'd like to make a video tutorial on the EPW software. So EPW stands for Electron Phonon 1E because it's a code that allows you to perform electron phonon calculation using a maximally localized 1E function in order to do um, interpolation of those uh, electron phonon matrix elements. So this uh, EPW website can be, can be found on um, epw.org.uk and uh, actually now uh, we are releasing the new version of EPW which is the version 4 and this version will be um, fully integrated into the Quantum Expresso software package which is this um, quite well-known first principle uh, calculation pack software. So what you will need in order to make uh, EPW work is um, Quantum Expresso and Quantum Expresso will also contain the EPW software. So you go to the um, Quantum Expresso website and you go to the download page uh, here and you can see that the latest Quantum Expresso release is the 5.3.0. So you can download um, this one by just um, finding it. So uh, let's try to find it. Where is it exactly? Um, here. So you can download it. So here I'm going to um, download it by just doing wget. And I'm downloading the Quantum Expresso 5.3.0. So you can see that I've already downloaded it uh, previously, but uh, let's re-download it anyway. So you can see that I have now an additional one. Um, anyway, I'll just get rid of it. So just do tar minus x if you have to untar this Quantum Expresso file. You can see it goes there. And so you can then go to Quantum Expresso um, 5.3.0. So you can see that you have a couple of um, files and notably you have this PW which is used to do uh, plane wave um, self-consistent calculation and we will use, we will uh, basically compile the code using uh, GCC and we would like also to use some kind of parallelization and for that we're going to use OpenMPI. So uh, when we're gonna compile it, we're gonna use the um, dot dash configure, configure like this, and then we're gonna once the configure will be done, we're gonna issue make, and then we're gonna have a list of uh, package that we can make. So we can make PW, but we can also make phonon and EPW. Um, so in this case, because the EPW software has been introduced after the 5.3 uh, Quantum Express release. Mm -hmm it will only be included in Quantum Expresso in the 5.4, uh, which will uh, normally be released at the end of April. So if you watch this video in May, you will probably have Quantum Expresso 5.4 uh, or higher, and that should contain EPW. Since it's not the case, what I will do is just use the um, trunk version of Quantum Expresso that you, you can only access if you are a Quantum Expresso developer. So you can see that here you already have this EPW um, folder. Um, when you're going to uh, download the Espresso uh, 5.4 or, or higher, you will not have this folder. You will not have, for example, uh, the, the phonon folder. Um, there will be a lot of other folder missing. And the way to get them is just to make, to type make and then phonon. And this will automatically download the phonon folder and then install it. But before doing that, what we need is two things. We need a compiler, and here I'm going to use GCC. So you can see that I already have GCC version uh, 4.8.4. If you don't have it, it's very easy. So here I'm, I'm on Ubuntu. You just type uh, sudo apt get install and then GCC. You type your password, and then uh, this will uh, install it. In my case, I already have it installs so it doesn't do it but if you don't please first uh, install GCC. 
Then the second thing that you need is um, a parallelization um, software, and we're going to use uh, OpenMPI. So for that, you just go to the uh, OpenMPI uh, website uh, that I have here, open-mpi.org, and you can go onto this page and simply so in the download, you can download the latest um, version, which is OpenMPI 1.10.2. Again, copy location, then you just do wget, and then you download it. So I've already done it, so I won't do it again, but basically you will just get this openmpi.tar.gz folder. Again, you unfold, um, you unfold um, the tar.gz. This will create this openmpi 1.10 uh, folder, which is there. Right. So now we need to compile this folder with the same compiler as we're going to use for Quantum Expresso. So I want to use GCC, so I'm going to use GCC to compile it. Um, so uh, basically, we want OpenMPI to be installed in a specific place. So in my case, I've decided that I want to store the binary file for OpenMPI and the libraries into this uh, MPI folder. So you just create a folder. You can do mkd to create the folder, mpi. In my case, it already exists, but you can create the folder. So this folder will just be empty. So in my case, because I've already installed it, you can see that there is a couple of things, but this folder can be empty. So you just do pwd to get the full path of that directory, which is important. You can then copy it. So then you go to openmpi, and then you do um, dot dash configure and then prefix. So prefix will tell, um, the when you're going to compile the code, it will tell where you want the binary file to be installed. So in, in my case, I want it to be installed in this um, espresso-mpi. So you just hit enter, and then you will, um, it will basically uh, configure the code. So this is a bit long, so I won't show it all. Once this is done, what you do is di simply make install. And this will install the code and where it will, uh, so it will first, the bank will compile OpenMPI and then the install will put the binary and the libraries inside um, the path where you are, that you have specified with prefix. So it will basically create all those files here, which are in the uh, MPI. Now, what we need to do is to set up our path so that um, the computer knows that we want those uh, OpenMPI to be um, to, to be the, the libraries that you need to look for. So, um, two things are important to let's say uh, global environment variables are important, and you can access them by doing echo path. So this is your path. You can see that I already have a uh, path that is set. You can export uh, an additional path. So in my case, because the path, uh, you need to set the binary, where the binary is. So I'm going to go to binary here, and I'm going to just copy the path of the binary of the OpenMPI. And then you just do export path equal, and then you place the path that you want to put in front of everything. And then if you just do that, you're going to lose all the other information that is stored into this dollar variable path. So what you want to do is redefine the path variable and then append uh, this new um, path. But you still want to keep the old path. So for that, you just do dollar path, which means that you're going to keep all the previous path. And then you hit enter. And then now, if I echo to see what is in the variable path, you can see that now I have this additional uh, expressor slash MPI bin uh, file. So this is good. Uh, and then the second thing you need is uh, LD library path. So you need to do something very similar. You go to lib, uh, open MPI. And again, you need to add, append this path to your um, open um, LD library path. So this is another environment uh, variable that is needed. So we're going to append this slash MPI lib open MPI to our 
LD laboratory. Okay. So now if I do echo dollar LD library path, you'll see that I now have uh, this in front of it. Okay, and this will basically say to the computer that he needs to first look there. Which means that now if I do GCC, again I will have my GCC 4.8.4, but now if I do MPI run, for example, which is the command that you need to use to run uh, a calculation in parallel, uh, and then you do version, you will see that I have the uh, open MPI version 1.10.2. So this is correct. So now that we have correctly set the path, we can go to our espresso and we just need to do um, dot dash configure. And this will configure, um, and then the, the configure file from Quantum Espresso will detect automatically that we have an open MPI and a GCC uh, G4 uh, implementation I mean, uh, in the path. So you can also notice that there is another couple of things that could be set in the path. So those are um, linear algebra routines, so LAPAC or BLAS or fast Fourier transform. And you can also do exactly the same thing as for the uh, OpenMPI, but you can download, for example, FFTW3, which is an external library. So those three libraries can also be downloaded, and you can then do exactly the same, export the variable, and then the uh, Quantum Espresso will detect them, and it will use those external libraries. But if you don't provide Quantum Espresso with those libraries, then it will use by default the libraries that are inside that are shipped with Quantum Espresso. So that those libraries work very well, but they are not uh, the latest one or the best one. So it, you could, um, you might want to, for example, install the latest LAPAC libraries, and then you need to do exactly the same thing as I did for OpenMPI, but you need to do it for uh, LAPAC or something else. So once we have done that, you just uh, then can do make, and you can see that now when you do make, you have uh, different um, plugin of the Quantum Express or suit that you can issue. So you can issue make PW, make phonon, and make EPW. So in order to be able to make EPW, what you actually need is to first do make PW and then make phonon. So we're going to do that, we make PW. And I, I must mention that actually it's possible to go a bit faster by um, using the um, multiple uh, com um, compilation by doing minus j4, which means I'm going to use four uh, thread. Um, if you want to know how many um, core your computer have, you can just do cat proc CPU info. So you can see that in my case I have eight core because um, the core numbers goes from zero to the number, so the seven, which means that I have eight core which means that I could, in principle, uh, make minus G8, uh, and I can then compile with eight threads. So you can see if you do top, um, there is a different instance of the Fortran compiler. Okay, so uh, you can see that the PW is done, so now we can uh, make phonon, um, and this will take uh, a bit of time. Um, Sometimes, if you make phonon in parallel, uh, there, is a, there are some issue because phonon actually rely on other um, plugin and will try to compile them. And sometimes um, there is kind of a, um, a hierarchy, which means that you can try to compile with multiple core, but sometimes what I found out is that it doesn't work very well. So that's the reason why here I'm compiling with only one core. Um, Yes, so this might take a bit of time. Um, and basically, one after we have uh, compiled the phonon code, then the last thing we need to do is compile um, EPW. And when we will do that, what it will do is it will automatically download the one 90 code. So I'm going to just show you this uh, code, one year 90 so it will automatically download this code on which EPW rely. Um, and it, yeah, it will download and install this one year code and then compile EPW. So maybe while um, 
before the code is compiling, I can quickly show you the uh, EPW, EPW uh, website. So if you start, the most important part are probably the, the documentation. So you can see that there is a list of input variables um, for EPW. You can always choose one, click, and then see a small definition, the type of variable that is, uh, and stuff like that. You can go back. Then if you hit the theory button, then you have this um, basic theory. And finally, you can see that now we have uh, five tutorials and we hope to, to put more. And the, the input file associated with those tutorials are actually available in um, the EPW. So if I go inside EPW, you go to example and you can see that the five examples here um, you have all the input files in those uh, directory. So for example, um, gallium nitride, I go inside, you can see I have a directory to do the formal calculation and then a directory to do the EPW calculation. So I have a set of input files, for example, that one. So you can see there is some input file. So while you do the tutorial, and I'll do a specific um, tutorial on how um, to run those tutorial, I'll explain that you, you need to go there. Okay, so now that the phonon code is installed, we can finally do EP make EPW. And here you can see that um, it automatically downloads the one year uh, tar file and then uh, compile one year. Right. Um, okay. Uh, yes, tutorial. And then finally, something quite important uh, the forum. So we have now a, a new EPW forum. So if you have any question, the best place to ask your question is on the forum. Uh, just register and then ask uh, any questions. So the forum is quite new. Um, you can suggest uh, to add some category and stuff like that. We're happy to um, take into account uh, any suggestion and try to help you installing or running uh, any examples. Um, okay. So this is compiling. And here you see I'm compiling with um, optimization three, which is rather stringent. I mean, quite good optimization. So if you want to do the same kind of compilation, but on a high uh, HPC cluster, you can actually do exactly the same thing. And you can locally download uh, OpenMPI, for example, and then locally install it. Or you can also use modules. Um, because um, a lot of HPC centers usually provide modules, you can just load the modules and then directly um, make the dot dash configure and then make PW, phone on, and then PW. So it's even easier if you work on a HPC cluster. Okay, so now we have uh, all the three software installed. So you can go to um, CDBN. You can see that I have the executables. So if I do pw.x, you can see that it starts the um, code. If I do phonon, start the phonon code. And finally, if I do pw, it starts the pw code. You can see that now we have version 4. Um, so if you want to run the pw code or the phonon code in parallel, you just do mpi run minus np and then the number of processors. So in my case, I can do 8, maximum of 8, because I'm on my desktop computer. So I can do, for example, 4. And then I provide the software, and then I provide some kind of uh, input. Uh, sorry, something like that, just like this. And then I, I should provide some kind of input. So you can see that here, if I launch it, it will detect that I launched with four processor. Something quite important is that in EPW, uh, currently, we only have one level of parallelization, which is K point and Q point, but not G vector parallelization, which means that if you want to do parallel calculation, you actually need to add this variable and pool and this variable should be the same as the total number of processors. So this means that it's using um, four core at the k-point level. So that's the detail. Um, it's uh, explained in the tutorials, um, but it's just something that's quite important because some people um, don't realize this and then the, the code crash, basically. Um, and so that's it. Um, with this, you have a working installation of EPW. And with that, I thank you for your attention. Bye-bye.